Hello, Lucas Rubuki here with another AngularJS screencast. Today we are going to be talking about some fun things that you can do with AngularJS filters. So my friend Anthony posted this question on my blog the other day that I wanted to take a moment and address. This is what he had to say. I'm following your example, but seems unclear to me on how do you bind two elements together. For instance, my content types are two select inputs, and the selection in the first input changes the options in the second select input. How would I do this? Well, Anthony, that's a good question, and uh, it's something that when I started Angular that I was scratching my head about as well. And so I thought I would take this time to show you a really simple way to do this using filters. So just a little one-on-one -on -one before we get started. Um, a filter is essentially a mechanism that selects a subset of items from an array and returns it as a new array. So let's see this in action here. So what I have over here is AngularJS filters, Paleo edition. And what this is, is you kind of have some paleo food groups here, meats, vegetables, fats, etc., and paleo foods, which is an entire list of paleo approved foods. So the idea is that when you would select, for instance, a paleo food group, that you would only see the foods that fall into that category. Now, just a little side note here. This is inspired by one of my favorite bloggers, uh, Ben Nadell, who were practically like twins, except for, well, he has talent in lots of muscles. But I am going to close the gap by, you know, getting into this uh, paleo thing here. So he's not even going to see me coming. So let's take a look at the code over here. What I have is a paleo service that has a groups array and a foods array. And in each one of these arrays, I have various objects. So I basically have an object that represents a paleo group. And then in the foods, I have objects that represent foods with a group property that basically says what group that food is in. And then I'm just exposing it with uh, some getters, get paleo foods, get paleo groups. And then I am making them available in the main controller uh, via scope.paleo foods, scope.paleo groups. And then I'm pulling them from the paleo service. So let's jump over here to the HTML, and what I have is just some HTML uh, Twitter Bootstrap boilerplate that I have two selects. Um, so I got ng model my group. So when you select a group, you actually know what it is, and then I'm populating this with ng options, which is like an ng repeat that is dialed in for a select control using a list comprehension. So it's group label for group in Paleo groups. And then I'm doing the same exact thing down here for the food. So ng model equals my food. ng options is food.label for food in paleo foods. And so this is basically what you're seeing over here on the right is the groups and the foods. So wiring these two up, these two controls together is just a matter of actually inserting a filter into the second select. So what that is, is you basically use a pipe symbol and then you put your filter expression after that. So we are going to use basically an object pattern which says that we want to filter based on a specific property on an object in the array. So this is what it looks like here. We're going to go with so it's pipe, filter, and we're going to filter on the group property of the foods array, and then we're going to say my group data. And what that is, is it's saying filter on the group property, and then whatever the data property is on my group, match it up to that, and only the foods that match the data property on my group return. And that's really all there is to it. So let's take a look. You'll see that there's nothing in here because we haven't selected anything yet. Let's go with meats. Steak, chicken breast, grass-fed beef, bacon, oh, eggs, 
fats, for instance, coconut oil, olive oil. So you can see now it's responding to the whatever the group is. That is the foods that you're seeing in the second control. I do think it's weird that you only see, or that when nothing is selected in the groups, you see kind of this empty select here in the food select. So let's just add just a little bit of polish here. We'll just go ng show. And we'll say my group. So what this is saying is if this is defined, go ahead and show it. If not, then do not show it. And I am going to set display to none. And so I'm certain that the CSS style police are uh, on their way to my house. But you know what? I'm only setting one property, and it's only going to get set once, so I think that is okay. I don't think any kittens are going to die here. So, paleo groups, meats, bam! There it is. Check it out. And so that's just a neat way to kind of just make it a little bit of a nicer experience. So, real quick, let me just show you another technique that I picked up when I was putting together an example for my book, Angular JS in Action that I thought was fairly clever. Uh, filters become pretty handy when you're doing layout with a nested ng repeat. Let me show you what I mean. So let's create um, let's go here, groups. And so I have actually just a style up here called groups. And I figured I would just go ahead and type that out. It's better than watching me type it out in real time. And we are going to just do an ng repeat over the group. So we're going to go to go group in paleo groups. Like so. Let's put another um, h rule in there. And then Let's go ahead and loop over the foods as well. So we'll go ng repeat. And then we will go ahead and just display the food that we're working with as well. So okay. Let's go ahead and just refresh this. And so what you have here is we're looping over the group, so you get five columns, and then we are displaying all the foods in each of these columns. Well, by now, I would imagine that your brain is already working ahead of me, and you say, well, clearly you just need to filter out the foods for the columns that they're in. And you are absolutely correct. And so once again, using this filter uh, kind of pattern here, we're going to go filter. And we're going to filter on the group property. And in this case, because we're looping over and we have the group item here that's kind of in scope, let's go with group.data. So notice from going from here to this right here, it was just essentially just a few lines of, not even like a half a line of code. And now you've got something pretty cool, pretty interesting, and useful. Now, let's go ahead and take this one step farther. Totally bonus round. Um, I'm having a good time. I'm enjoying myself. So let's just do something a little extra. If you uh, don't want to stick around and watch this, go ahead. No problem. Just hit that thumbs up button over there in the corner, and um, I'll catch you next time. But if you want to stick around, uh, Let's hang out. So I'm going to create another property called selected, or another class, sorry. And I'm going to give it a background color of so this is another Web 2.0 approved color. And I am going to, let's dynamically set a class here with and 
almost saying is selected. So we'll actually put this. We're going to create this method in just a moment. Group data. And so what this does is it actually calls this is selected and it sends in the group dot data for the group item that you're iterating over. Angular is really good at keeping track of that. And let's go over here and just put this real quick. Now we are going to need to do a undefined check here because it's not going to be set when you first load it. So that's my group, which is the name of ng model that we did in the view. So if it's undefined, let's just go ahead and return. No point in going any further, but this is where kind of the meat comes in. So scope dot group dot data. So what's happening is if the group that you're sending in matches the my group dot data, then it's going to return true. If not, it will return false. So let's go ahead and refresh this. And let's select meets. Oh, bam. So not only is it filtering it out here in the second select control, but you're actually dynamically setting a class in this column. And let's go with fads. So I think this is pretty cool that, you know, with, you know, maybe like 10 lines of code of JavaScript and just some clever use of some Angular uh, built in directives is you actually kind of have something that is starting to resemble an application. So pretty neat. Um, this has been a lot of fun. Anthony, I thank you for the fantastic question. I think it's, it's a very good one, one that I've had. Uh, ben, thank you for being an awesome blogger. I am going to go have a 24-ounce T-bone steak and uh, hit the gym. Until next time, happy hacking.